Welcome to the day seven of uh, PCMI Summer School. Uh, today we start a new series of lectures that will be about Riemann-Hilbert problems. The Riemann-Hilbert problems had tremendous success uh, while well, both in random matrices, improving various delicate asymptotic results and establishing universality theorems, but also very well, be, uh, you know, very well beyond in different areas. And we are very lucky to have the world's leading specialists on, or specialist on Riemann Hilbert problems, Percy Dive from the current institute in New York, who will tell us some parts of this story. Welcome. Okay, uh, first of all, I want to thank the organizers for in inviting me to par participate in this wonderful, quite extraordinary event. Thank you. Okay, so the subject is Riemann Hilbert problems. RHP, and uh, Riemann-Hilbert problems mean different things to different communities, but I'm going to give one particular point of view on what they are. So my goal in these four lectures is to do the following, is to say what a Riemann-Hilbert problem is, why we're interested in them, and lastly, is how do we use them, how do we work with them, going on from that. Okay, uh, th these four lectures which I'm giving now are a con condensation of a semester course which I gave at N NYU about two, two years ago. You can find it on uh, AMS, Open Notes. So there's a very nice thing that AMS have done. They ask different people just to put up their notes and you can find a much more extensive version of what I'm speaking about on the AMS Open Notes. Now, uh, there are many uh, references which I've given. I'm not going to write them all, all, all down. They're references of two kinds. One's about uh, Riemann-Hilbert problems specifically, and the other's about the general kind of mathematics, particularly from com complex function theory that one needs to know to work effectively with uh, Riemann-Hilbert problems. I'm not going to repeat it. You can find them all in the handouts. Now. Uh, now, I want to start off speaking about special functions. And what's important about them is that they give explicitly solvable models. for a huge array of phenomena in mathematics and in physics. And when I speak about special functions, I mean, for example, the Bessel functions, Airy function, and so on. Now, uh, of course, let me just say, if you haven't met up with these, there is no way that you're going to have any experience in mathematics without coming across them at some point. So uh, a general reference, let me just ma ma mention one, is, okay, so this is a book by Abramovitz and Stegen. So it's a general reference for classical special functions. You can also find it on the NIST web website in an updated free, free version, which you can just down, download. So see NIST. Let's 
So it's a go-to book for finding out anything you want to know about spe a special function theory. So how does it work? So let's write down the area equation. Looks like this, y double prime of x equals x times y of x. And you look for a solution. So you seek the following, y of x equals an integral over some contour of e to the excess f of s d. So you want to choose f of s in such a way that you solve this equation. And you begin y double prime of x is equal to s squared over c. And that you observe over here has the following form. If you alter by x times y of x, it says x times e to the excess fds of the contour. And this object here is equal to d by ds of e to the excess. And now you integrate by parts, assuming that you can drop off the boundary terms. And then you see, you've got the prime, prime over here, of course. Then for these two things, for this thing over here and this thing over here to be equal, you see that you have to have that the f prime is minus s squared times f. So in other words, f must equal e to the minus uh, one third of s cubed up to some constant. So what that means is that you can find a solution to the area equation in the following form, e to the xs minus s cubed over 3 ds over some suitable contour. Maybe with a constant. OK, now why are you happy about this? Why is this good? Well, if you're an analyst, particularly, what's interesting about special function theory is you can evaluate the asymptotics. it's x going to plus or minus infinity. You're very interested in that. And what makes you so happy about this representation is there is a fundamental, all-important mathematical technique known as steepest ascent. Descent, sometimes called stationary phase. And this technique, applied to that integral, allows you to compute with extraordinary precision what the asymptotics is for the solution. In fact, if you didn't have this representation, you would not, I think it's a fair statement to say, you would not ever be able to solve the asymptotic problem. So steepest ascent, stationary play, stay, phase plays an absolutely central role and mathematical analysis of spe special functions. Now, if I take this contour, I take my constant c to be 1 over 2 pi i, and I take my contour c to be something like this. This goes off at an angle 
e to the i, and this is e to the minus 2 pi i over 3. That's my contour. And then I introduce the function a i x, which is 1 over 2 pi i, integral over this contour of e to the x s minus s cubed over 3. Yes, and this is called the airy function. And plays a central role in many, many different problems. And you've seen it in earlier lectures, coming up in random matrix theory and different things like that. Now, by choosing the con contour appropriately, you can get other solutions of the, of the equation, like uh, something called the, the BI solution. And I'm um, going to leave that off. But I want to give you a sense on what the standard is. When I say you can obtain precise information, I want to give you a sense exactly what one means by precision. And you find, again, you can find this in Abramovitz and Stegen, or on the NIST web website. If you introduce zeta equals 2 thirds x to the 3 upon 2, then one has ai of x is equal to 1 over 2 root pi, x to the minus a quarter, e to the minus zeta, and this is asymptotic expansion, k running from 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the k, ck, zeta to the minus k. This is as x goes to plus infinity, and then you've got that ck is equal to the gamma function at 3k plus a half upon 54k, k factorial, gamma of k plus a half. That's as x goes to plus infinity. And you also have ai at minus x, again, x going to plus infinity. So minus x goes to min minus infinity, it's 1 over root pi. And you've got your x to the minus a quarter. And you've got the sine of zeta plus pi by 4 times the sum, minus 1 to the k, 0 to infinity of c of 2k, zeta to the minus 2k plus cosine, minus cosine, zeta plus pi by 4, times the sum 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the k, 2k plus 1, zeta to the minus 2k, minus 1. Now, I'm writing this down because I want to fix the table. Now, this is what one wants and what one needs when one speaks about the pre precision. You know every single number that you want to know about these functions. Now, what's particularly true is these formula. And let me say again, you obtain these formulae because you have that integral representation together with this all-powerful instrument called steepest descent. Now, these problems, or these uh, formulae, solve the connection problem. Or sometimes just called the scattering problem. And it says the following, that if you know the asymptotics of the solution as x goes to plus infinity, so you would know this form here, then you automatically can read off what the solution will look like at min minus infinity. So it's a scattering problem because you think of x sitting over there, y double prime equals x. You think of this, that x as a potential. 
of x times y of x. And you think you've got some wave coming in, looking like the area function, and you want to know precisely what is coming out. And this solves that problem. Now, coming back to this. The erases are here. Now, uh, what has emerged that was first submerged and it has re-emerged re is what one calls modern special function theory. So we spoke a little bit about classical special function theory, Bessel functions, Airy functions, but there's something which has emerged in the last 40, 50 years called modern special function theory. And at the core lie what are called the Panave functions or equations. Six of them. And just as classical spe spe special functions, area and so on, were extremely useful in solving the linear problems of the 19th century acoustics, uh, e e electromagnetism, <coughs> now what has emerged is the, the modern spe special function uh, theory is, gives you the language to describe and explain many of the modern phenomena which have, uh, have arisen in nonlinear science. So, linear science, mostly, that's a little bit of a sim simplification, and modern is nonlinear. And as you've seen <coughs> in the earlier lecture, many of the fundamental features of ra random matrix theory, for example, are expressed in terms of these pan pan levee functions. Now, let me give an example of how they arise. Let's look at the modified Cordebeg de Vries equation. So here's a PDE. It arises in the theory of water, water waves and has played a very important role in modern nonlinear non science. Here's the nonlinearity in the equa equation. And then you find the following. Big pun. Okay. Thank you. Find we find, as t goes to plus infinity, in the region in that region that y of xt is equal to 1 over 3t to the third p of x over 3t to the third that's order 1 over t to the 2 thirds. And p solves pan 2. As I said, there's six of them, and I'll say more about them later. And what does it look like? p double prime 
x equals x times p of x plus uh, p cubed. Usually there's a 2 in front there, right? Yeah. So it's a nonlinear equation. And if you remember what the area function looks like, it's some kind of nonlinearization of the, <coughs> the area equation. So you just look at this self-similar solution <coughs> for uh, MKDB in this particular region, and you see what arises is this function. Now, such a point of view or such a computation would not be of any use according to the standards which we've written down a few, few, few minutes ago. What you want to know is as much as you know about the area function, you would now like to know about this pen pen of a function. Can you, for example, describe the asymptotics as x goes to plus infinity and x goes to minus infinity? And can you solve the connection pro 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 problem? OK. So those are the issues. Let me give another example of how they arise. There's a problem which was mentioned. So you look at uh, per permutations. This is going to be an example two, whereas this was example one. Okay, you look at the permutations. Call it Sn, permutations of n numbers. For example, if we take n equals six, and we look at the perm permutation, let's call it pi. Is equal to 4, 1, 3, 2, 6, 5. Then these numbers here, 1, 3, 6, would be an increasing perm permutation of size 3. So 1, 3, 6 is an increasing permutation or subsequence of size 3. Another example would be 1, 3, 5. That would be another example of an increasing subsequence of size 3. And for a general permutation pi, you let ln pi be the length of the longest increasing subsequence. So in this particular example, L n equals 6 for well, this pi is just 3. And then you put uniform distribution on the perm permutations. There are n factorial of them. So each one has probability 1 over n factorial. And you ask the question, what is the probability? ln is less than to n, and what does this look like as n and n go to infinity? And the answer is this. If you look at the probability that ln minus 2 root n over n to the sixth this will converge as n goes to infinity to e to the minus integral x to infinity, t minus x squared, I have this right, of uh, y or p of t dt. Do I have it right? No, one of them just, I've got things wrong. T yeah. Sure, where am I up to? Over here. And again, p is exactly the same function 
which arises there, on the understanding, so P solves panel of A2 with the boundary condition that P of X looks like the airy function as X goes to infinity. So you see, you begin to get a sense in which the panel of A functions, which are non-linear non functions, enable you to express the solution of a problem which arises in com combinatorics here. And this is a very special function. It's the distribution function for Tracy Witham, which gives you the distribution function for the largest eigenvalue of a GUE matrix, and that you have seen earlier on. Now, uh, there are many pro problems in com combinatorics which are expressible in terms of these ran random matrix theory, theory ideas, uh, but I just want to get the idea across here that uh, these pan Panabay functions are things which you want to understand. You, if you want to know now, about this pro pro probability distribution, for example, when x goes to plus infinity, it's clear that the right-hand side is going to go to 1. On the other hand, what does the distribution look like as x goes to minus infinity? Then you're going to have to know a great deal about this function, p, p of t. OK. So now. As I say, the question is this, what do I do with the, here. Okay. Can we solve? Connection problem. So that's the basic issue. If we know the behavior at plus infinity, can we, confirm, can we immediately conclude and know what the asymptotic behavior is? X goes to minus infinity and vice versa. Now, the difficulty one faces here is that there is, if we knew that there was an integral representation for the pan pan of A2 function, which was similar to the integral representation for the Airy function, we would be in good business, because then we can just use a classical steepest descent method. But there is no known And this is where Riemann-Hilbert problems come. Riemann-Hilbert problems gives you a way of representing these fun functions which is amenable to as detailed analysis as you could perform on the Airy function using its integral representation. So, but we do have. This is one of the many reasons why one is interested in Riemann-Hilbert prob problems. All right. Um, okay. And there is a nonlinear steepest descent method. So if there's nothing that you take away from these lectures, except the following, you will have gained, gained something. That when you find that you have a representation 
for one of these fun fun functions in ter terms of a Riemann, Riemann Hildebrand, there is a technology there which will enable you to evaluate that problem with any precision that you need. And the, uh, the nonlinear steepest descent method, which is the nonlinear analog, uh, was in, in introduced by Jinjo and myself in 1993. So we get to what is a Riemann Hilbert problem. It involves two objects, a contour, a choir, a contour, which we'll call sigma, which is oriented. Each of the arcs of the contour, which can have points of self-intersection, self has a direction associated with it. And by convention, the plus side is always on the left as you travel along the contour. So, so you have such an oriented contour, and you also have a function v, which is called the jump function. And V goes from the contour to the uh, L infinity functions. L infinity functions on the contour, such that V and V in inverse belong to L infinity. They are the invertible, let me put it this way, GL and KR. So you have a function defined there, a k by k matrix function, and it's in L infinity and it's in, in inverse. These two, in, yeah. Big pun. At this stage, any union of arcs, any union of arcs, fin a finite union of arcs, but I'll say more about that later. Now, we say, we say that the uh, n by k matrix function, m of z, solves, or is a solution, or let me put it, is a solution of the Riemann-Hilbert problem, sigma v 